Hey there, I'm Benjamin from Love Starter. In this video, you'll learn how to get started using Google Forms in my tutorial for beginners. Google Forms lets you create forms for event registration, feedback surveys, contact forms and quizzes. They're a great way to collect information and since it's a part of Google Drive, all of the form submissions are saved and you even have the option of viewing responses in Google Sheets. Today we're going to cover the basics of creating a Google Form. We'll look at how we can create a survey and view responses and we'll also look at how we can create a self-grading quiz. Okay, let's jump in and get started. To start, you'll need to create a Google account. You can then head to Google Drive at drive.google.com or enter forms.new in your browser to immediately create a new form. I'm already in Google Drive, so I'm going to select New and then More. I can then click Google Forms to create a new form from scratch. Or if you'd prefer to create a form using one of Google's templates, then you can use the arrows and select From a Template. We're going to create a form from scratch, but let's take a brief look at the templates. We can see there are a number of templates we can use. There are templates to collect contact details, to register for different types of events, collect feedback, and more. So if you're stuck, you can use these templates to get started. Since we're going to be starting from scratch, let's head back to Google Drive and let's create a new form. Let's start by naming our form. We can see it says Untitled Form on the top left corner, and it also says Untitled Form under the Questions tab. The name in the center will be seen by anyone viewing our final form. Today we're going to start by creating a contact form, so let's enter Get in Touch. This is what people will see when they view our form. There's also an option to add a description, so let's add some details. OK, now it still says Untitled Form on the top. This is the name of our form inside Google Drive. Only you will see this name when you're logged in, so let's select this. And we can see it automatically uses the name we just entered. Let's change this to My Example Contact Form. Now it's time to create our form fields. We can see there is a multiple choice option that's added by default. Let's select Multiple Choice. We can now see the different types of fields we can add to our form. We can add a short answer, which lets people enter a single line of text. We can add a paragraph, which is a long text field. Multiple choice lets people select one answer from a list of options. Check boxes lets people select one or more answers. Drop down lets people select one answer from a drop down list of options. We can let people upload a file. Linear scale lets people select an answer using a range. For example, we could ask people to select a star rating between 1 and 5. Multiple Choice Grid lets us create rows and columns where people can select one option per row. For example, we could ask people to select their level of satisfaction for different features of our product or service. Checkbox Grid is similar to the Multiple Choice Grid, but people can select more than one option per row. Finally, there are fields that let people select a date and a time. As I mentioned, we're going to start by creating a contact form. So let's change the name of the first field to Your Name. Since I want people to provide their name, I'm going to enable Required. This means that people will need to enter their name before they can submit the form. Now let's add another field. We can click the plus sign on the right, but since I want to add another short answer field to the form, I'm going to click the Duplicate icon. Now let's change the name of the field to Your Email Address. We can see that there is an automated suggestion to enable email collection. Let's select this option to see how it works. The email address field is now moved to the top of the form and we can see it automatically collects the email addresses people enter. Let's select Change Settings. We can see that Collect Email Addresses is selected 
and there is an option that will let people receive a copy of the details they've entered into our form. Let's enable response receipts. And let's leave the if respondent requests it option selected. There's also an option that lets you limit the number of responses for your form to one per person. Enabling this option means that people will need to be signed into their Google account in order to submit your form. I'm going to leave this option disabled for my form. Now let's click Save. And let's click on the preview icon to view our form. We can see the email address and name field in our form, and there is an option for people to receive a copy of the details they've entered. Let's head back to our form. If you like the way this works, then feel free to leave it as it is. However, for my contact form, I want to ask people for their name before their email address, and I don't want to send people a copy of their responses, so I'm going to remove the email option we just added. I'm going to click Change Settings. And I'm going to deselect Collect Email Addresses. I'm going to click Save. And I'm going to duplicate the name field again and change it to your email. Let's click the three vertical dots and select Response Validation. This lets us control what people can enter into the form field. Let's select Number and change this to Text. And let's select Contains and change this to Email Address. Our form will now validate this field to make sure people enter their email address correctly. We can also enter our own error message which will be displayed if people make a mistake. Now let's click the plus sign to add another field. Let's name the field Your Message. And we can see that Google Forms automatically changes the field so that it is a paragraph field. Now we're going to add a short survey to our contact form. Let's add a new section. This will break our form into two pages. Let's name the section My Short Survey. Let's click the plus sign to add a field. And let's name the field How Did You Find Me? I'm going to leave this as a multiple choice question and I'm going to enter Google for option 1 YouTube for option 2, email for option 3, and I'm also going to click add other so that people can enter their own value. Let's add one more field. Let's select linear scale. And let's add our question. And add labels to the scale. I'm going to enter strongly disagree and strongly agree. Let's click the configuration icon and let's select the presentation tab. I'm going to enable the show progress bar option so that people can see it's a two page form. Let's click save. And now let's preview our form. Let's enter some details. Click Next. Enter our survey answers. And submit the form. It says your response has been recorded, and people can click the link if they'd like to submit another response. Let's head back to continue editing our form. We can see we've recorded a response to our form, so we can click the Responses tab to view what people have entered. All of your responses will be stored here. The Summary tab provides an overview of all of the details people have entered into your form. If you would prefer to look at responses for individual questions, then you can select the Question tab. Or if you'd prefer to view how each person has completed your form, you can select Individual. If you'd also like responses stored in a Google Sheet, then you just need to click the Google Sheet icon on the top right corner. 
You can then create a new spreadsheet or have responses added to one of your existing spreadsheets in Google Drive. Clicking the three vertical dots gives you additional options. You can choose to receive an email every time someone completes your form. I'm going to enable this option. You can also control the response destination. This also lets you store responses in a Google Sheet. There are also options to download and print your responses. Now let's click the configuration icon. This lets us adjust additional settings for our form. We can see the option to collect email addresses as we've already covered. At the bottom, we can let people edit their responses after they've submitted the form. And we can even let people see a summary of all the responses that we've received. This is useful if you're collecting survey information and you want people to see the survey results of everyone who's submitted your form. Now let's click the color palette icon. This lets us modify the theme used for our form. There are some basic options to choose from. We can upload a header image. We can change the color used for our form. We can change the background color. And we can change the font. Clicking the three vertical dots on the top right corner of our form gives us some additional options for the form. We can quickly make a copy of our form. We can create a pre-filled link for our form. This lets you enter details that will automatically be included in your form fields. For example, you could use a pre-filled link if you're sending a form to people in your email marketing platform. This would let you merge their name and email address so they don't need to enter those details as they click through from your email. You can also invite other people in your organization to collaborate with you on the form, and there are additional advanced options. Now let's click the Send button. This lets us share our form. We can email our form to people to complete, we can link to our form, and we can embed our form on our website. Okay, let's close this. And let's click the form icon. This takes us to the Google Forms homepage. We're going to create one more form, so let's click blank. We're going to create a self-grading quiz. It's going to be a simple quiz with four questions about Google Analytics, but of course you can include any quiz questions you like. Let's name the form My Google Analytics Quiz. Let's select the configuration icon. And let's select the Quizzes tab. Let's enable the option to make this form a quiz. I want this to be a self-graded quiz that automatically provides people with a score, so let's leave immediately after each submission selected. I'm also going to leave the other default options enabled. Now let's click Save. I'm going to start with a multiple choice question, so I'm going to enter the question. And the possible answers. Now we need to click Answer Key. I'm going to make the question worth one point. Then we need to select the correct answer. And click Done. Now let's add another multiple choice field. Enter the question. And the possible answers. Click Answer Key. Enter one point. Select the correct answer and click Done. Now let's add another field. Enter the question. This is going to be a true or false question. Let's click Answer Key. Enter one point. Select the correct answer and click Done. Let's add one more field. This is going to be a question where people will need to select more than one correct answer from the options. 
So let's change multiple choice to check boxes. Now let's enter the question. And the possible answers. Let's click the three vertical dots and select Description. And I'm going to enter Select All That Apply so people know they need to select multiple options. Now let's click Answer Key. Enter one point, select the correct answers, and then click Done. We can now preview our quiz. And let's complete the quiz. After we've submitted the form, we can view our score. That's it, we've now created a self-grading quiz using Google Forms. So that's how you can get started with Google Forms. As we've seen, Google Forms is a great way to create surveys, quizzes, and of course forms. Remember that once people have completed your form, all of the information that has been collected is available after you open your form and select Responses. And you also have the option of viewing responses in Google Sheets for greater flexibility. To learn more about Google Sheets, including how to visualize your responses, check out the extra resources in the description below this video. How are you going to use Google Forms? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, please subscribe, share it with your friends, and hit the like button so I know to make more videos like this. See you next time.